Hey everybody, um, I am uh, live uh, here in Venice. I'm starting with the fading light. Uh, we're going uh, to go into the house and look at some art. And, uh, you know, you, you can't help but love a beautiful place like Venice to live, even if we're um, sort of sheltered in place. But before the light gets too low, um, there's a couple of rooms that are uh, not as lit as well as the others, so we'll see if we can look at the work in there first. Uh, please disregard anything you see that's not directly related to this thing. This is my home studio. I'm, uh, the light in here isn't great, but I'm going to start with, I'm just going to describe some of the work. Um, this is a photograph by Josh Bagel Classman uh, from Venice. Um, from 1982 or three, we showed this at a several shows. We showed it at out in the street a couple years ago at the museum gallery in, um, West Adams district. We showed it at art Palm Springs and I love it. It's a really beautiful piece. Um, he's a total Venice local been around forever. I've known him since 83. We surfed together a bunch. And, uh, uh, you know, he's just a class act. He's an ex exceptional photographer and a really good guy. We put him in the show called A History of Venice that we did at the Beyond Baroque Literary Arts Center with Venice Heritage Museum in, uh, I believe, September. Um, the next artist, this big painting here, this big artwork here is a big resin piece that's from Terry O'Shea. He's a Venice artist too. He's passed away now. He, I met him back in the 80s when he was still alive. We partied together and he was known for doing uh, resin pieces that were pretty amazing. And his claim to fame, uh, or what got him famous was in 1969, I think, or maybe as early as 66. He was named by Maurice Tuckman at Los Angeles County Museum of Art. He was named um, um, young uh, young artist. They, he gave, got the Young Artist Award. They gave him two thousand dollars, and he had the he was given the opportunity to put one of the pieces in the in the gallery in the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, which is really conservative at the time. I'm going to go close so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's really beautiful. Anyway, so uh, he, they didn't, the LA County Museum of Art didn't understand his work. So to make a long story short, he, um, they didn't take it for over a year. So he got mad. So he went over to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and had two people watch him uh, and signed an affidavit. And I think was filmed by one of our local artists uh, who MB knows, who should remain nameless. That he's that he may have watched him do it. We don't know that for sure, but um, he threw the piece of work that the Los Angeles County Museum of Art didn't didn't accept into the La Brea Tar Pits, which is right next to the museum, which is owned by the museum, essentially. And then he put an affidavit on the wall of Los Angeles County Museum of Art saying, "Hey, now you own the work." So he was an interesting character and a really cool guy, and so we represent his estate. Um, this is a photograph of mine from, I'll try to get the, the um, chandelier out of the thing, but that's a photograph of mine from 1977 of San Francisco when I was 16. I already had a career selling, making photographs. Um, this art is uh, from Hung Viet Nguyen. He's um, a really wonderful artist who's been in a lot of museums. Uh, we're going to hopefully have a solo show of his work sometime in 2020 or 21 and if we get our gallery back and that is um hung viet nguyen uh, a lot of people know him uh this artist here very many many people know she's sort of a venice local in a way she's lives in malibu but she's around all the time her name is gay summer rick and she shows over at the bg gallery a bunch and this uh painting i bought from a show i did called waterworks in 2014 when this was showing at um, the the Porch Gallery in Ojai. Um, this is Edmund Teske. Uh, Edmund Teske worked in Venice 
uh, he's long past dead now. He was one of my mentors, and uh, that's his signature there. And he um, he uh, was known for being the photog favorite photographer of Jim Morrison and the Doors. So you'll see his work on the <coughs> back cover of um, um, a couple of back and front cover of a couple albums for uh, the Doors. And then this is um, yes, Sonny. I'll get the cough looked into. Um, it's not a dry cough, fortunately, and yes, I'm taking medicine. Uh, so, um, I, uh, so what happened was we, we opened our gallery on February 8th. Um, I'm going to go into the other room and get a business card so you can see what it's about. But we opened the gallery on February 8th after months and months and months of working on it, raising money and doing our best <coughs> to get it opened. And then, of course, we were open three days, and then the pandemic happened, and then, um, and then the other day they announced that they were closing the building. So 12, out, 12 galleries in the building can no longer access their work. So the work that I was going to show you in the gallery of Gloria Ann Harris isn't accessible to me. There's like She's got you know 40 or 50 paintings in there from the last 50 years, but this is us. Um, it doesn't work this way, I just noticed. I'll flip it around and give you the, um, wait, how do I do this? Um, I'm new to this, guys, sorry. So that's our logo. That's where we are going to be. The gallery right there, we're going to be there and on Maple Street if they ever open up again and if we um, can survive long enough to stay open. Uh, it's been a rough couple weeks, uh, more than a couple weeks. Um, but you know, life is life. We're not anything if not survivors. Uh, this artwork here is by Sam Francis. Now he, I think he printed this down the street at Joe Funk's old studio down the street on Sunset uh, Avenue where I live. I live on Sunset between 5th and 6th and um, Sam Francis did this work. I bought this from Robert Berman over at the Berman uh, Gallery during one of his art auctions, which he holds regularly. Uh, but uh, <coughs> um, Sam Francis had a wonderful um, career. He's passed away now, too, but he's from Venice, um, or at least worked here a lot. The other Venice artist, <coughs> sorry, you guys, uh, that I have here is that's Peter Alexander. That piece is called Locus, which um, it's a, you can... If you, it's really hard to see with the light I've got here, but basically what it is, it's from 1992, and it's a uh, um, overview of Los Angeles, which he's known for, and then of course that little gray blob there is kind of like locusts and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit of my own work. Well, first, before I do that, I'm going to show you uh, my little altar here. I've got M.B. Boissonneau on the bottom. That's her painting right there, which I forget the title, MB, I'm sorry, you'll come on later and you'll tell them what the title is, but um, um, I love that painting, and, and I love it so much, and the, 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 there was a, you know, a nail here for another piece of art, which was Glorianne's work, which is at the gallery, but of course, I put my, um, my favorite hat there to uh, remind me of what we're dealing with. Uh, this work here is um, by Jody Benassi, which I own, and um, we are doing a trade for this work, and so she has to come to the studio and pick something from me, but I love this piece. We showed it together at Bread uh, at uh, a place on in Culver City, which the name escapes me. This is one of my paintings, or oh, actually those four are my paintings. Um, the one on the bottom is um, specialty specialty ink where you mix it like CMYK instead of RGB like it doesn't mix like traditional paint um, and that's part of what's called a a code series and then these paintings I wasn't going to show but it feels like it's some it might be interesting to show them these are from the assassin series otherwise known as fake news series 
Um, this is a, a Mexican journalist who was assassinated in Mexico last year for saying things he shouldn't have said. Um, here's another one that was assassinated. Um, I did a series of Mexican journalists and a series of Russian journalists. <coughs> the whole series was called Fake News. And uh, they, Mexico, Russia, and Pakistan were um, one, two, and three in 2017 for a number of um, murdered uh, journalists. And this series here, this this piece is from is a Chumash Indian series, and it uh, depicts a horse and rider. It's from a petroglyph uh, drawing that May's son uh, had cut out of a piece of um, bra uh, brass, or I don't know, I think it's brass. Anyway, she gave me this. Uh, May's son used to live in Venice. She had a place right down the street at Rose and um, Rose and Sixth. Um, you can see this here, and uh, uh, she she gave this to me, and so I use it a lot as a stencil in my work, and so at least lately, anyway. And so these works here happened within the last couple of months. They're basically um, studies of. Uh, <coughs> <laughs> this figure going through space through the uh, <coughs> <coughs> I'm so embarrassed I'm so sorry I'm gonna have to get something to drink to calm my cough but um um these are all part of a series um related to uh the Shumash Indians and uh the search for um the search for uh uh, I don't know, um, yourself, I think. Uh, we're all kind of searching for ourselves sometimes. And sometimes you need to go off into space and figure where you are. Um, okay, I've just had a drink, so that helps. Um, this work, uh, let's see. Um, this work here is by Billy Turtle, a, a very well-known was a well-known Venice artist who just died this year. We've had the unfortunate, um, the joy and the unfortunate uh, uh, honor to show uh, uh, five artists who've died from Venice in the last, <clears throat> you know, we've showed them in the last two years and five of them have died because we tend to often show older artists' work. Not all the time. We show a lot of younger artists' work too. We're trying to change that. Anyway, here here's another piece. That's like that's why we like working with Venice Art Crawl because we like to show younger artists work who really care about what they're doing. So that's another piece by Billy Turtle. Um, this is a piece by Mike Street, which I love, which is related to Hollywood. He collected um, from his mom. He collected, uh, uh, you know, the the photographs that they would give you. Um, you know, if you were a Hollywood fan, they would sign them and stuff, and then he, his mom would get them in the mail, and then he did these drawings and stuff. Really beautiful piece. And then this piece here, you can look at many of these pieces on the website. The website is veniceica.org, so veniceica.org, V-E-N-I-C-E-I-C-A.org. Um, click on the arts page or exhibits, and you'll see what we do. This painting here is from uh, Villain Kunapu, who happens to be the what most uh, prominent architect in Estonia, where I'm from. And the work next to it, this uh, hanging piece, that's uh, Billy Turtle as well. Here's a um, mask from, I don't know where it's from, but somebody can tell me someday. This piece here is from, um, <coughs> um, God, this is perfect. My cough starts right at the time I'm doing this. This piece is from Joost de Jong. He's from the Netherlands. Um, here's another piece from the Netherlands. This is from Antwerp. Uh, no, that's the Antwerp is Belgium. So this is from uh, Belgium. This was given to me by Oscar Spierenberg as a gift for the film, for putting him in the film festival that we do every year. Uh, this work here is by Stephanie Nefe from Sweden. 
Um, this I got at a garage sale around the corner. It's pretty cool. It's got um, some really interesting uh, musician uh, motifs in it. One of my old photographs from the 1977, a man selling balloons. Here's another work by Billy Turtle. Um, this is um, Joel King, who I've shown many times uh, with and with and without his wife, um, J.Y.U. Um, that's Debbie Arluck. This piece also needs to be traded for. She um, gave me this to, to show for a show called Out in the Streets um, last year that I told you about that Josh was in. And uh, I owe her a, an artwork for that. Um, and then this is another by Stephanie Nefay that was also in the Out in the Street show. And then this, nobody has seen this since 1991. That's from Mark Munsky. He's an old school Venice guy who lives in Hawaii now. And uh, that one's pretty amazing. I've kept it all these years. It's painted on glass. Really amazing piece. Really really tough piece. This is Phil Santos, um, one of his architectural renderings. Oh, here's a piece by Gloria Ann Harris. She doesn't usually paint pieces like this, but this is one of her few realistic looking paintings. Um, uh, <coughs> okay, so now what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go through some of my own work. Um, this is where I paint um, you can see my um, all my stuff, you know, and then I have drawer after drawer after drawer of stuff um, ready to go. Um, uh, back in 2009, I almost, let's see, what, what time do we have? Okay, so back in 2019, uh, 2009, I almost went blind because I'm a premature kid and my, um, I had to have surgeries and stuff, and so I started painting again, at, you know, like crazy. And so the first paintings I did were family members. So that's my brother. He happens to uh, run a, a business called Cole Guitars. This is done with watercolor, ink, and oil pastel on paper. And this is my father. My father passed away along with my mother within a month of each other. That's my mom in 2013 and uh, that's the photograph I shot of my mom that ma I made the painting out of <coughs> um, let's see and this is a drawing by my dad that kind of expresses his personality pretty clearly uh, he also did this piece and he also left me uh, these pieces which are on the ceiling which are kind of like rubbings from India and if somebody can help me identify them I would love it because I have no idea what what they are I know I moved the phone around too fast I'm sorry and then this is uh, I gotta get a good angle on that that's David Patrick Valera who's a cinematographer I hope he still has his job at the studio we're all losing jobs I'm in the movie business too so being in the movie business is really hard, really hard right now. Um, okay, so we're going to go through uh, just some paintings, and I'm just going to flip through them. And they're, they're very random. Some of them have not been titled. Some of them have not been signed. But I can usually tell how they're oriented by the way I put the tape on them. Um, let's see. They're all, ba they're all, generally they're ink, um, watercolor, and oil pastel, generally. And these are all part of the, what's called the Kud series, or there's an Estonian word that's hard to pronounce called Vitrazid, or something like that. And they're basically drawings, they're, they're, my friend Gloria and Harris, who you, many of you know calls them painted drawings, but I disagree. I, they're paintings. But, um, you know, so anyway, these are the kinds of things I do. I have a bunch of them up here. Um, these are all part of a series that occurred 
for several years between around 2014 till around 2018. And they become studies and contemplations. Here's another abstract one. <coughs> These are all, I think, around... Oh... Um, I think they're around 9 by 12 inches. They're fairly small, as you can see. But they have, you know, they have a rhythm to them. Often they're painted next to each other. Um, so, so sometimes uh, they can be seen. Here's, a, here's one from another series that I did many of, which is redrawings of... Um, other drawings. So my dad was a, was an artist who liked to use pencil on paper, and so sometimes I'd redraw his drawings and then color them in, but do them much bigger. <coughs> or I'd do drawings from like this one is from George Gross, from uh, a book that I have of George Gross's work. So this would be like Berlin 1920s, you know, sort of derivation. And here's more from this other series. Um, there's also big ones, um, really big ones. I'll have to hold it up and see if I can make it work. I'm new to this game, sorry guys. But there's a lot of big paintings that are all very unusual and weird and cool, some of them. Many of these have never been seen before, or at least very rarely. Um, they're fun to do. They're, they give me some Zen, and they they relate to each other. They're part of their puzzle pieces that are eventually going to be taken apart and then put in, put back together. Obviously, these last five or six are uh, similar motifs, all painted one after the other in the same way. These are a different series that had a lot to do with hard angles and diamonds and stuff um, and um, there's another series which involves a signature that I use you may have noticed a repetitive shape this uh, this signature here this sort of motion right to left that's something I've been doodling since I was a kid <coughs> so I decided to do a series of paintings about it and so they have a lot of movement and a lot of action and they're, you know, I, I'm talking too much. I prefer to let the work speak for itself, but one never knows how much one should say with new people in the room. Um, and so, as you can tell, I'm a color person. I really like color. I like stories. Uh, these, you can tell, are obviously all connected to each other in some way. Um, they were usually painted next to each other and then split apart. Um, so there's, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things. Um, it doesn't matter the quantity. Also, <coughs> earlier this year, I went to Estonia, as some of you know, and I was given the opportunity to um, put 33 of my um, abstract photographs from from throughout my career back in the, oh that's funny I just opened to that well guess where that is that's the Venice skate park uh, so um, what happened is a friend of mine Renee is a very well-known music promoter and a business, music consultant wrote this book called you are the influencer which is right now I think it's in the top 20 on Amazon for uh, Kindle and stuff like that anyway um, uh, he asked me to do put to make some placeholders, like sort of like chapter heads that didn't illustrate anything, just sort of like things for people to think about while they were thinking about the next chapter. That's Joshua Tree, and um, and so I gave him, you know, I went through my catalog and I gave him a bunch of them, and he picked some. That's uh, that's uh, let's see, let's get the shine off of it. That is um, the Annenberg, which is closed now, of course. Uh, that's the window outside my house. Um, anyway, the bottom line is he asked me to do a bunch of a bunch of artworks, and so I did. This is um, 
this is uh, the tent above um, <coughs> a studio down the street that Bill Attaway used to have a studio next to. Um, right, right, the same place where Sam Francis did his thing. How much? How many minutes? Is so I'm gonna have to cut this short soon. But um, um, also there's another book that um, uh, Rene did that none of you can read, I'm sure, because it's Estonian. There's only like a thousand, you know, a million of us who read Estonian, and it's not. I'm not one of them. But there's a whole bunch <coughs> more of these abstract photographs in there. <coughs> well, look, if I don't die before uh, this thing is over, I'll be amazed. I'm kidding. I'm feeling fine. But it just, it, this just happens at night sometimes. Um, I, oh, I forgot. This, this work here, this arrow that's sitting on the piano, that's by Cosimo Cavallaro. And um, I'll show you another one. He's really a fantastic artist. They did a documentary about him a couple times. And he had a show at Jason Bath not too long ago. Um, but that's another arrow. It's made out of stainless steel. And that's blue, if you can see the color. It's hard to see. And then this, this painting here, um, that is the first painting I sold in 1989 uh, to a guy named um, Egg Mahan who used to be a mime, and now he's a real estate guy in Venice. Um, but then he had to move, and so he gave it back to me on loan. So I don't know what the status of this painting is, but I was very happy to sell it to him back in the day. That's Ron Terrio, who used to be one of our artists. I love him to death. That's one of my paintings on there, up there on the top. Um, rolling through. Let's see, is there anything I should show you guys? Um, that's Estonia. 1941, that's one of my paintings of Levitated Mass. Uh, this is a painting by August Kunapu, who is Villain Kunapu's son, also a fantastic painter. Here's here, here's me with uh, Frank Geary when we did a uh, documentary about Lily Fenichel, who also lived here in Venice, as Frank did. There's um, Bridget Bardot. There's a Stuart Rappaport right there. In fact, there's a Stuart Rappaport uh, right there, which is his uh, intaglio work. Um, yes, it's upside down. It's supposed to be. It's a sunflower. And it's a fantastic piece. Um, I'm going to go into the... Oh, there's John Baldessari. Let's have a few seconds of silence from John Baldessari, one of our great uh, teachers, mentors, and artists, who I love to death. He was one of my teachers at CalArts. Uh... You know, Venice is an important place for me. I've been living here since 1981. I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. I'll turn the light on in here and hopefully, light, hopefully the power doesn't go out. That's Robert Nelson, the guy we saw earlier. That one there is called um, Frank and Mona. And that one is Dracuchelli. And uh, that up there is Michael Stearns on the top. And then that's my painting on the bottom, as you can tell. One more thing. Okay, thanks, Sonny. I got one minute. Okay. This is uh, Ave Pildes, a photograph from 1970. And, um, oh, I need to introduce Uti Harma. She's a fantastic artist from San Pedro. Who I never got to visit her studio when I was there. That's Lori Margrave, Edmund Teske, my niece's work, Aidan Cole. And that's a photograph of the man looking down. So I'm going to go now because it's probably better if I leave. Well, well, I, you know, and get some cough medicine or something. But anyway, everybody stay safe. Um, wear your top hat while you're going out. And everybody have a one t wonderful time. And Udi, I can't wait to see your segment. I really liked your uh, live video the other day. So have at it.